Hey everybody, this is QSub. Welcome back to Fantasy TV, uh, Treacherous Jaywalker Syndicate. Anyway, I recently did some videos about 4 mil Mylar bags, CGC slabs, as well as top loaders. And people have been inquiring about um, 2 mil Mylar. And a lot of these people have like current age comics that might not warrant such a high level of protection, but they want something that's above poly bag. So yeah, absolutely, two mil Mylar bags. I have example here, this is BCW. This would be E. Gerber. Costs a little more, a little higher quality. Uh, two mil Mylar bags, if you package your comic in a, they can be closer to the actual comic size because they're a little, a little more supple. Unlike a four mil, which is more rigid, you need a bag that's quite bigger than your comic, so you're not shoving it in there and damaging the edges of your comic. I'll be able to show you in just a moment some comics packaged in 2 mil mylar, and you'll see how much tighter it is than my previous video showing the 4 mil bags with the full bags. I'm also going to show you a neat little collection of Bronze Age comics I have, and I will show you a CGC rated Mint 10.0 comic. So just to illustrate how archival material size affects storage capacity, here's a BCW half or short box and these are Bronze Age comics packed in 2 mil mylars and this half box contains about 120 of these comics with Mil Mylar. This is a DC Ghost series and the backing boards are half backs. So if I was to package these in 4 mil Mylars and full backs, you could safely half the storage capacity, meaning I'd only be able to fit about 50 to 60 into this box. So unless you have particularly fragile comics or comics with super high value, it's not really necessary to get 4 mil mylar or full backboards. If you have current age especially, 2 mil and half backs work just fine and you'll really be able to maximize your storage. If this was a full length box, I could easily put 200 comics in here. Another thing I like to do is if you get a hold of some de de second um, dehumidifying packages, like these little packages you see, they sometimes come in um, products you might get like electronics or even certain dried food products. Uh, they're designed to suck up moisture and what I like to do if I get some clean ones is just tape a few to one of your backing boards and uh, you can throw it on top of your box, of your comics rather. And it, they really help to suck up any moisture. I live in Hawaii, but I live on the South Shore, so it's actually pretty dry here. But uh, it is a tropical climate nevertheless. You know, if you live in some place like Arizona or some place really humid, uh, you probably won't really need those, but um, it doesn't hurt to have a few in your box. Secrets of Haunted House number five. The uh, cover artist here is the famous Bernie Wrightston. I really like the Halloween theme with this one. Uh, this issue is more valuable with the higher grade. This is a very fine plus. So this can, this can run from $50 on up. Uh, it's super clean. I have this one in a four mil mylar and a half back backing board. So you see I'm packaging my comics really more by their value depending if I use a 4 mil or 2 mil mylar as well as the thickness of the backing board. Obviously for a lower grade comic you're fine with 2 mil mylar. If it's an issue that's a higher grade, more valuable, it doesn't hurt to use 4 mil mylar. It keeps it much stiffer. Uh, you know it can be have much more longevity if you're handling it more. Now there are one mil mylars.
personally, I don't recommend them. I think you should spend a little more and get the two mils, mainly because most of the one mil mylars I've seen, with even the slightest bit of use, they actually start cracking on the edges and air is getting inside. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're already kind of useless for an emergency purpose, such as if there's a, a, a flood and your carpet gets flooded or wherever you're storing your box, the sprinklers go off. You know, once you have holes in them, water's gonna get in there. Of course, air is getting in there, which is the number one reason you get protective bags, is to keep the air out, especially kind of humid or moist air. So this would be another Bronze Age run by DC. This is Ghost Comics. This is a 1972. And this is a cover by Nick Carty. And I really like the ghost line here. Uh, again, they're sort of borrowing a lot from the EC, you know, Tales from the Crypt and stuff like that. Of course, these would be a fraction of the price. However, the early issues of Ghost and in high quality they are worth something so a little bit more about packaging your comics might not always fit the exact mold sometimes specials come out that are different sizes or thicknesses uh, you can go ahead and cut your mylars and fold them over and tape them as well as your backing board in order to accommodate for that there's no reason you shouldn't have a high level of protection on even those unusual issues for example, here's a really tiny issue of Ghost, and uh, this comic compared to the standard Ghost size comic is really small. This would be a fine plus. This is a special issue, volume 3, number 17. So I just went ahead and folded over the mylar and taped it, cut down a backing board, you know, and I always label my comics in back for reference. Now, compared to this Tiny Ghost comic, here we have another special. It's so big I can barely even fit it in this camera. So this Ghost special would rate as a fine minus. I actually had to purchase a Mylar bag made for Life magazine. Uh, in order to find something big enough for this. It's actually kind of the perfect size. Uh, finding this in a, in a fine, a very fine, is a really good find because a lot of these, because they're black, have a really marked uh, spine wear. Now, this comic, because it was so big, I went ahead and doubled up on my backing boards and back. So you can see, no matter what the size of your comic, there's always a solution. You just might have to get a little bit creative. So now on to some CGC comics. CGC comics have a mylar that you can buy as well to put over the CGC. And for a valuable comic such as this one, I recommend it. Because you don't want the cover of your CGC comic getting scratches these milers will protect against that. Uh, this is a signature series CGC comic, a 9.0, Tomb of Dracula number one, signed by Neil Adams. You can see the signature right there over the moon. This comic would list for probably about $350. Okay, so here we have Spider-Man number 252, signed by Stan Lee. This is another 9.0. This is the first issue with Spider-Man in his black costume. Okay, so there's Stan Lee's signatures. It's really cool to own a Stan Lee signature. I mean, he is the man. However, don't get too carried away because he has literally signed thousands, if not tens of thousands of comics. So just because it's signed by Stan Lee, you know, it doesn't mean it's like a cream of the crop, super high value comic. Uh, if Stan Lee has signed it, it'll usually be worth about a hundred bucks. What you really need to look for with Stan Lee comics is quality, as well as an issue, like a very famous issue, a notable issue, 
is going to be worth a lot more. And this one is, uh, even though it's a later issue of Spider-Man, it is the black costume, like I mentioned, so it does make it quite unique. Now, this comic does not have the Mylar CGC bag, and so what I'm going to do right now is show you. Here's what they look like. It's basically bagged just like you would bag a, a regular comic. Of course, you don't need a backing board. You can just slide your comic in, your CGC, and then you would want to pull it over and tape it. And again, this comic should be in a Mylar bag because this one certainly will appreciate in value over time. Anything with Stan Lee on it will appreciate, of course, over time. Bless, bless his heart, Stan Lee. Now, for a CGC graded mint 10.0 comic, this one was one of the earlier ones that uh, CGC deemed to be mint. So it just says Mint 10.0. Now they say Gem Mint 10.0. This one as well has the, of course, has the CGC Mylar bag. It is a holofoil edition, which means the cover is sort of like aluminum, which means it's more likely to be in mint condition. However, even this comic would probably list for about $350 or $400. Mint comics are a little bit subjective. It's really hard to get a truly mint comic because usually by the time it hits the newsstand, it's no longer a 10.0. I mean, it's usually a 9.8 or 9.9 .9 at best just because traveling and stuff like that. So, if you search for 10.0 comics, you're not going to find a whole lot. If a private dealer is grading something as 10.0, I would be really skeptical of that. Even PGX, which is sort of like a CGC style, um, you know, comic protection guarantee company. Even a 10.0 by them, it doesn't quite have the same clout as a 10.0 by CGC. So if you're in the market for a truly gem mint 10.0 comic, I would just go right to CGC and get one from them, like on eBay or something. That's really the only, you know, respected mark of a, of a gem mint. Here we have a Classics Illustrated number 41 from 1947, which means it's 67 years old. This is in fine condition, which would be considered quite high grade. And this is quite valuable, probably worth upwards of $150, $200. And here's a very rare Classics Illustrated called Great Expectations. Came out around the same time. This is number 10. This is a highly desirable issue because it's the first appearance of Blade. And Blade is the trilogy was based off of this character. And this comic, this particular one is a fine plus. It's really clean. There's just a date stamp on the title. You can see there. Other than that, it's really tight, nice corners. Nice colors, very flat. Uh, this would sell for about 200 bucks. Here we have a Bronze Age comic, The Witching Hour number one. Thanks again for watching Fantasy TV and this little discussion on comics and two mil bags. Feel free to check out some of my other videos. I got some really neat music videos, some travel videos. I actually went to the Philippines during a typhoon uh, film before, during, and after. Of course, it wasn't the big destructive one that hit, but these would be called Typhoon Bloom, the series. You can see them on my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot and have a great day. I've been